the Methodist Church resembles meth madness to me. We have a long history, that fake church and I. It started in Ely, Nevada. We had moved there from Alberton, Montana, as apparently my mother had whisked herself out of her teaching job there by having the audacity to stick up for what was right. They, she and my father, needed to go to a place that they could both work as they were both teachers. Well, I don't know the full story, but someday it, too, like everything else, will be revealed for what it is by the cross-examination of the prosecutor, who is the purveyor of truth, as he claims to be the truth incarnate. He is what these churches are supposed to be about, but the truth has been twisted in such a way as the churches, run by tares, run by the father of lies, nothing but confusion ensues. Well, when we moved to Ely, we found ourselves apparently rent-free in the Methodist parsonage. I think it was because my mom agreed to play the organ for the church. She was good at that. Years later, when I finally found out she doesn't even believe in Christ, I asked her, then why did we go to church? She replied, because that was the family thing to do. There were some very strange things going on in that parsonage, but that strangeness had been present my entire life. It was nothing new. This church, which is the one on Pyramid Highway in Reno, was where my sister was married decades ago to her husband, Paul Farron. I didn't know at the time that Paul's deceased sister-in-law, Darlene Farron, had been one of the many Zodiac Killer's victims. Supposedly, he was never caught. Uh, by the way, Paul has this notion that once you die, everything simply disappears. That means the murderer will never be caught, never be put on trial, and never convicted. That, to me, is the most conflicted logic statement I have ever heard in my life. And he was a State of Nevada employee. Okay, imagine your state being run by people of such conflicted logic. This, too, is the church that I played some music with with Mike Brown until I found out that they support, what is it, LGBTQT, QLGBT, whatever. Mike Brown thought that we should stay there and maybe shed some light on things, but I knew that was conflicted logic. If you believe lies, then you don't want to hear the truth. It's too offensive. I did ask the pastor why he supported something that God did not, and he said it was not worth breaking up the congregation over. I left. Now this is what I have to say. This is conflicted logic. I interviewed some people while filming this. One was an older couple, well two were an older couple, one a young girl. I interviewed them separately and they both came to the same conclusion. This just doesn't make sense. Why, if God loves y'all, did he send his son to die on this representation of the cross, which is not what it looked like, by the way. So what I will say is, this requires some cross-examination. Examine the cross. I highly recommend you do it. Research the matter and see what conclusions you draw. Try not to do what I did, and that was to make assumption after assumption, assuming that what was being taught in the kingdom of the tares was accurate and correctly translated, that it was true. It was not true here at the Methodist Church. Do you believe me?